Good morning everyone, it's day 45 of the 100 day project and today's suggestion is from Loretta, inspired by applique. Wow, <laughs> that's interesting. So um, I have this beautiful piece of hemp here and I was just playing around with some fabrics and I think I might put those on there and we'll do an applique. So I've got my little stitching box here. Not quite sure yet, but we'll see how it goes. I might have to stop and start the video to be able to um, do things because, you know, sewing takes, it's a slow process. So I'm actually just going to machine stitch in place the fabric. And I'm just going to put a straight stitch and I've got a regular needle and I'm going to go around my big piece first. When I finish stitching, we'll talk about applique. And this, I think, can be a little journal cover I think I'll make. So I'm just going to go here, turn. So when I turn the corner, I always turn with my needle down in the fabric. And then I'm going to just, so I've just stitched onto the ticking and then I'm going to go around that. So I haven't even had to sort of pull out and then start again. Pull out my fabric and then start again. Of course, we, you can slow stitch this by, you know, stitching them down by hand. Or you can go a bit faster and do it with the machine. So that's that. Um, I'm probably going to put some sort of doily. Let me just have a look in my drawer over here. See if there's anything that I like. I don't want square ones. See, I move things around, then I can't find them. What's this? Oh, Ooh, that's very fine. No, I don't think I like that. It's got a pink edging on it. What's in this bundle here? Oh dear, look what I've pulled out. I've got a huge bundle here. No. I don't think I want any of these. No, no, no. Oh, I don't mind that one. I'll leave that one out. I like that one. And not those. So squish those back in that little pocket there. Maybe the big ones. No, or my little ones. Hmm. Must have used a lot. Okay, so I've got this big. This is linen. I mean, with, this is, what I'm doing is, this is all appliqueing. So applique can be hand applique or it can be machine applique. And um, I don't like that. It can be machine applique or hand applique. And uh, yeah, so um, it's all applique. I wonder if I like that. Just a little piece of that. I might just cut that off. Um, so we're not going to do hand applique, um, that like, so yeah, in the hand applique you've got, so this has been machined and it's raw edge, it's not turned under or anything like that. Then you can do, you could do this by hand, which is slow stitching. So you would sort of whip stitch all the way around to hold it all in place. Um, and then, or you can machine applique and that's what we've done. Um, and then you can do applique also refers to um, 
sort of like you can do birds and flowers and in that case you can do raw edge applique again with the machine or you can do um, needle turn applique um, where you turn the edges under so you don't have raw edges now I've got videos already with needle turn applique um, I know a lot of people struggle with it and don't enjoy it uh, so probably we won't do that today if you want to see those videos you can go back they're quite early um, quite early when I first started my YouTube channel I think I just want a tiny bit of that coming through there so I'm actually just going to pin that and I'm just going to think about whether I want to hand stitch it on or machine stitch it on machine stitching with this on is a bit annoying because you've got to go around it's quite hard to to go around corners like that and that can just go there the back A very nice color this doily although I could machine applique it sometimes I just shoot right across I don't bother going in and out because it just holds it I think that's what I'll do because we don't want to be here all day we want to focus on the applique the other applique this is also applique it's all applique yep I'm just going to shoot on around decide how do I want to decorate it I'll snip that off I'll keep that because that could be useful don't know for what but you never know like on a snippet or something yeah I like that oh I think that's pretty I like those colors okay so then I was thinking could do an applique and I was going to do a raw edge applique um, and I was thinking I might hand stitch it. So I'm just going to think about it for a second. Um, I've got to find some fabrics. What fabrics would I... Oh, they're all the way over there. Just a minute. So let's see. I've got my regular basket of stuff here that you've already seen before. These are some of the hand dyed ones. I don't think I want to go with that color, but I could go very neutral. Or I could go with a, like a blue. Like, not that blue. It's casting a shadow just a second. So that's those. I don't want these. I don't think I want that. No. We won't go through all of them. Don't worry. I'm just going to try and... Oh, what about this colour tonight? Lily's doing a lesson. linen but I don't think I want to go that bright do I don't know maybe I'll just cut one piece so what I was thinking I'm going to do one of my favorite sort of flowers that I used to do them needle turn but as I said for this video I won't because it's not everybody's favorite thing to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a rectangle I'm going to do like a flower kind of like that I've just done a vague drawing. So to get this petal shape, I'm going to cut a rectangle. I think I am going to use this colour. It's growing on me. So I'll just cut three rectangles that are similar. Yeah, this is my usual way. I 
when I was doing needle turn, I did have templates sometimes, and you draw it on the back, on the front actually, with a disappearing pen, and then that way, um, you know, then you can needle turn to your line. But we're not needle turning today. I don't want it to be too big. I might have cut too much. What I want to do is just cut this sort of shape. And that's too big. But I can trim it down there. I want it to be a bit narrow, I think. Yeah. I mean, I might not like it. Who knows? So I want them more or less a similar height. And I'm just, you have to have good scissors and I'm just, the fabric is turning, not my hand. And then we'll do this one. Of course, you could be inspired by applique and do applique sort of shapes, but with papers. You could um, paint papers and then, and then do the shapes which would be nice too. I thought about that, but we've been doing a lot with paper. So why don't we do a little bit with um, fabric? So I was going to put these. And so with um, fabric applique too, um, what I normally do is I cut out all of my pieces first. I think I'd like that one a bit taller. I think I'd like it a bit narrower. I wanted it to be more spindly. Um, I'm talking not too loud because Lily's doing a lesson and I don't want it to be shooting up like that. I want it to be at an angle like that. I still think they're too wide. That's better. So obviously without a template, it's a bit of trial and error. If you want to use a template, I recommend just doing it with um, cardstock. Okay. So they're going to be like that. Let's pin those. And then we can just adjust them afterwards. This is quite a typical applique type of flower. They're quite stylized normally because otherwise... Um, now, I need to do this little piece here. And I'm not going to go traditional and do um, like um, green or in green leaves or anything like that. I'll probably do this color leaves maybe no I don't know we'll think about that in a second just let's get oh like this no it's not easy making decisions for me as you know so, oh, I've got lots of these linens keep popping out don't they I quite like that so I, may, I might use this one so here I'm going to can I'm going to cut a little rectangle I'm going to cut across the top and then come around and it's kind of like a triangle but with rounded corners like that and that's going to go there okay And then what? I'm going to have my line coming down there, my stem, and then I've got to have two leaves. What colour do I want to use? That's probably the hardest thing is just deciding your colours. I don't know if I want that. I'll just cut one out of this and see. What do I have up there? I don't think I've got any green. No. <laughs> I want those to be the leaves. I don't know. I really don't know. Now I do have a where's my pen? 
I mean, you can draw it on with pencil, the stem, if you want to. Um, I think I've got it in my other thing here. I think you, you can draw it on with um, pencil if you want to, but you just know that you won't be able to rub it out, so you need to cover it. Here it is. This one works, I think. This is um, disappears with water. So I'm going to have my stem here. I'm going to embroider that. But I am wondering, do I want maybe more of a linen sort of colour, like that sort of colour? Or maybe one of each. I don't think I want to cut that one though, it's too, I've only got that little piece. Where do I have a piece of linen? Just grabbing a piece of linen. I really do hoard my fabrics. I really, I can't help myself. So see if I want smaller leaves, maybe. It's a bit boring like that. I think I'm going to go with the blue. Okay. Okay. And I think I'll have the leaf down here and put that one up there. Okay, so let's stitch these on. They might take me a minute. I'm just going to move, put all the flab fabrics, the flab licks down on the floor. I'll sort those out later. They can just all be shoved in there. Okay, right. <laughs> I've got this thread here. This is like a crochet thread. I think it's, it's our, I bought it at an antique market. I think I bought it in Sydney, the antique market. But it's good thread just for stitching things on. Actually, yeah, I'll use that needle. And I actually don't mind if you can see um, the stitches. Hopefully I'm close enough. Do I need to turn my light on? Let me just see what it looks like with the light on. Is that better? No, it's more yellow. I don't like that. Okay. So let me pin on my leaves. Actually, I need to decide what I want to do for my stem as well. Because I th I'm thinking I might like to couch something on there. Oh. What if I were to let that piece of linen go? No, the linen has disappeared. Oh, here it is. I wonder if I'd like to, I think I'd like to cut my stem out of this. So that's about the length. I didn't really need to draw it. I'm going to just cut a little bit wider. and just cut a very slight curve into it. I could actually use that piece. I'm gonna applique my stem as well. So we're just raw edge appliqueing here. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Probably have it up like that. That's why I needed to decide that first, because it, I needed to tuck it under there. Okay, so I need to pin that as well. Okay. 
Okay, good. So I've got my thread here and I think I might start with this here because this catches that, 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 that and that. Okay, so then I can take out a few, a couple of pins in one go. And all I'm doing is what I think they sometimes, my mum and I call it whip stitch, but it's also called overcast stitch as well. And so you go um, into the, just a minute, entangled. This is why I don't like pins, because you get tangled. Um, you go from over your fabric and the bottom, the base fabric as well. So you're overcasting. So I'll just go up here. I'll just do this stitch and I'll just explain what I'm doing. Just I want to show you. So normally you come up into your fabric from the bottom and you go over there and then you come back up over here. So I'll show you like this. And you've done it. So what I do though is I come up next to where I, where I went down so I, I don't waste so much thread. So rather than coming up down there, I've come up next to it. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just the way I like to do it because I, I use less thread that way. Not that I'm saving on thread, but it's just I don't have to change thread as often. So yes, of course, this would be fun to do if you had some really um, lovely, lovely colours. I'd like to do that. There's a lady, I can't remember what her name is. I follow her on Instagram and I've seen her on Pinterest. She does um, cut out um, shapes like petals and leaves and stuff um, from painted papers and then does collages with them and creates um, like a scene sort of thing, if you know what I mean. And I think they look wonderful. It's always been something on my bucket list to do, to have a go at. I probably, I've never tried it because I think I probably wouldn't do as nice a job as she does. And so I would be disappointed. So I, I would never try to do it. Thank you for asking this because I sometimes need a bit of a, I love sewing. And I don't do it as much as I should because I always just sort of sit there and I, you know, it's like getting started. Um, and as I always say, switching my mindset from paper to fabric and um, and I don't always do it, but this makes me do it. If I had a more, um, this is very um, robust, this um, hemp, So, but if I had a more um, flimsy fabric, uh, no, I wouldn't do that for, I was going to say I'd probably put it in a hoop. Um, if it was really flimsy, I would, um, but otherwise I wouldn't because it's easier for applique to hold it the way I am. And sometimes some of you, like, I, I don't know, I've got quite a few new people, so I'll just say it. I don't usually not use thimbles. I just can't get used to them. And at most I have this thing that helps me pull the needle through if I'm going through many layers and having trouble so my hand doesn't get too tired. Um, and now I'm going to continue down the stem because I feel like that's the next most important thing to stitch on. Um, yeah, I don't use a thimble because it slows me down and I just feel awkward with it and don't enjoy using it. And it's amazing when you're sewing how um, different, like how it sort of all comes together once you start to stitch it down. Like it doesn't look like much when it's um, pinned and then when you start to stitch it, it sort of comes together. So 
or just whiz along here I probably won't make you sit through watching me do this I'll do a little bit so you see how it progresses and then maybe I'll do the finish it off and then um, stop the video and finish it off and then come back so you can decide to have I think I might have my um, leaf coming over the top of my stem in this one and the other one can go under the stem Okay, now where am I up to there? So I think I'll... So my goal is to stitch as much down at once as I can. So I'm going to hold on to that. And try and go, like, try and figure it out, like... So I'm on, on the leaf now, so I might as well turn around and continue up the leaf. And then I'll come back down and I can continue around the stem, you see, without stopping. Well, I'll probably have to change my thread, but we'll see how I go. And I don't mind, I'm not changing colour thread. I like seeing the this um, ecrui kind of colour on the blue. So it's kind of intentional. I'm doing big stitches so you can see them. And if you were, um, you know, concerned, you could use, uh, besides the pins, is a like a, a removable disappearing fabric glue. I don't tend to use glue, you know, regular glue when I'm sewing. I don't, act, I just don't like that. I, I just would never use um, I would use it if I'm sewing paper and fabric, but I don't know, just fabric on fabric, I prefer not to use glue unless it's a fabric glue. Like a, a glue that's, you know, disappears after time, is what I mean, not just glue stick. So hopefully you can see my hands aren't in the way but I really wouldn't know how not to be in the way this always happens towards the end of your length um, comes out Oh, again. Okay, I'm going to go through and change it because if that's going to keep happening, we'll be here all day. Even though I could stitch a bit more with that thread. I think we'll get rid of it. So you go to the back and just catch, capture a few threads in your, in your fabric and then loop your needle through to knot it a few times. There we go. I actually quite like this thread for applique. It's nicer than regular cotton, you know, machine thread. So I'm doing my knot where you put your tail, pointing down your needle, wrap it around a few times. Maybe I'll do it four times because this is a fine thread. Push it down. Hopefully it works. And you get a knot at the end. Okay, I'm going to capture the point there. Don't want that popping up. Now I'm back onto the stem. So you want to be as continuous as you can. Oops, I've come off my... Um, I didn't really want to have to wet it, so I think I'll pull those out. 
and get back on track. There we go. So that blue pen, um, it's a Japanese pen and it's water erasable, so you have to wet it. But you have to wet it quite well because otherwise it just bleeds and you just have this blurry blue mess. I mean, it does eventually go away, but I don't like it. So um, if I can avoid having to wet it, I will. Just capture that a bit more. I've still I've got a bit of blue showing there, but and also when you're live um, applicing, live edge applicing, not turning it under, um, you don't want to bring your needle up right near the edge there because it'll just fray. So you sort of want to come up further in. From the edge so it doesn't fray. Now this one I was going to tuck under wasn't I just to do something different. And you can quite often just use your, your needle and just to help you push things around, move things around. Oh, I really am a ding dong today. Okay, just push that back in again. So, yep, one thing about um, applique is you need to sort of stop and readjust what's happening every so often just to make sure everything is in place where it should be. I'm just going to um, stitch my leaf in, but I'm not going to go too far. I'm just going to put two stitches and I'm going to come back and stitch the leaf down. So I don't have to stop and start. Yep, so you don't I don't like you don't want to be too have too complex sort of drawings, if you know what I mean, like um, for your applique with fabric because you're not painting you don't want to have it too detailed then it, you're usually fairly simplistic sort of patterns I had a good day of procrastination yesterday. Didn't do anything that I was supposed to be doing. I Well, I, I did stuff that I've been wanting to do, but um, just anything but doing what I should be doing. Um, I emptied out some some drawers and got rid of some rubbish. Not in here, in just out the, outside my room. Um, because there are things I don't do. I thought I might do them and I didn't do them and I've never used them. So um, I got rid of all that stuff and I made some space. And that was a perfect example of me procrastinating, putting off what I should be doing. Okay, I'm going to end off this thread. Um, I'll stitch down there and up there and then I'll come up here and go around these and then I'll come back. Um, I'll do that off camera so we're not here all day watching me stitch.
Okay, so I'll see you in a minute or in half an hour. Bye. Okay, so I am back and you can see I went on a little bit further. Um, we just had lunch and I've stitched down everything. I added one of my stamped bits here. I had a little scrap of linen there and I put one of the pieces of this over here and I added one of my initials. I love the initials. I love that pop of um, red and the the um, the writing is what I like, the script. So that's the front and oh, look what's sitting on my table, that famous hold. That's never, it's been years, it hasn't found a home yet, but it will. I'll just put that over there. That's very precious. Um, so on the back, I could leave it or or I'll say or again. Um, I could, for example, put cut this down and put that there. I quite like that. I do quite like that. Or I could put these might be too white. I could put the seven. No, I think I like the I like the um, the B. So I'm going to just trim it down because there's too much. And I'm going to stitch that on. I could machine stitch it or hand stitch it. I've got quite a bit of hand stitching on the front, so I think I'll hand stitch it. I'll put it, just move it down a bit. I don't like putting things right in the centre. And then I'll move it over just like that. Okay. And I'll grab some thread. I'm just going to use this thread again. Oh, come on. There we go. And then we'll stitch that on. And then we'll decide if we want to do a little bit of... Um, Panther stitching, running stitch on the front. And this is not going to be like a removable cover or anything like that um, that needs to be washed. So I don't mind using the stamp things from the other day that weren't necessarily done with the um, fabric ink. So it is, you can see it's quite handy having um, quite a few bits and pieces of fabric stamped, ready to go if you want to decorate something with them. I hope you're all having a lovely day creating. I just went to the post office and it was shut. So that was fun. Although, it's, I mean, it's just my one near the house, so I didn't have to go too far. But I was convinced they were back to their normal hours, but they're obviously not. Fairly quick stitch, don't have to be neat. In fact, I like it the messier it is, the better I think it looks. There's a little knot in there. I don't know if I can get it. I'll just have to deal with it come on does not want to go away I 
Oh my goodness, and it's the same colour thread as the back, and I cannot see where the stitchy thread is. That's that. So what I'll do is um, I've got a loop at the back, so that stitch is going to be loose. So I'm just going to come back over here, because I couldn't get rid of that knot. I'm just going to come back here and stitch over that stitch to make sure it stays down. Okay, now we can continue on. I was whizzing along there and then I hit a speed hump. So as I said, you can do it all machine stitched, you can do it all hand stitched, um, you can do a mix like I've done. I like a mix. Nearly there. So I was just thinking on the front, I might do some stitching with embroidery floss. Let's just have a look. Okay, so that's the front and back, like that and like that. Right, so I could do something on there. I mean, you could do details on here, but I don't think I'm going to. That's not, I wanted it to stay fairly simple. Um, okay, I'm going to grab this thread here, I think. Just keep it beige. I just think if I do um, anything on there, then I feel like I need to do it stuff everywhere. And I want to keep it fairly simple. So I think I'm just going to do a little bit here to add a bit of texture um, and maybe something down there. I don't know. We'll just start. If I see that it's taking a long time, I'll pause it, finish it off, and then come back on. So just a few rows. Just adds a little bit, a bit like yesterday, added a few rows of stitching. Just adds a little bit of interest and texture, I think. Oh, I know what I had to say. Um, now, I've got a few orders, things that have been purchased, and I've messaged you on Etsy for your phone numbers. 
and some of you haven't um, gotten back to me because possibly you don't have receive your messages um, to your email so if I've messaged you on Etsy could you if you've got an order with me and it hasn't been shipped yet it's not marked as shipped um, and you haven't given me your phone number um, and you only send me your phone number if you have a message from me because um, I've only messaged the people from whom I need their phone number and I don't need it because I need to telephone you I just need it because um, I need it for the transport documents not that they call you if you're not home when they go to deliver your um, parcel um, however they require the phone number So how many have I done? Four. And I, I, I like to do uneven numbers, so I'm going to do five. It's very subtle. And as you can see, it really doesn't take that long. go and do it just in another spot somewhere oh I know what else I wanted to do I'll show you that in a minute oh my knot didn't work one two three yes it worked that top okay and I want to do a little bit I don't I'd like to do it there but I'm not going to because then it's just directly under there I'd like to just do a little bit here and you'll hardly be able to see it because it's tone on tone but it will give a little bit of a little bit more texture not that it needs it because this is hemp oh i thought i might like to add buttons will i add some buttons what about some buttons i'm just going to do three rows here because you can hardly see it but i'll know it's there Nope, no fabric paint. Because I wanted to get like, my and then my paint on it. Ah. Like no, I don't, I have a, like a medium that you can put in the paint that makes it go onto fabric, but it goes a bit, stiff um oh you could do embroidery yep i don't think i want to put any on the back what i then wanted to do was um i wanted to grab if i've got it here i don't know where it is i had a navy i had a blue in that thread but i don't seem to have it i don't know where it is so I will use, where's my embroidery floss? I brought it in here. Oh, here. Oh, wait. Do I have any blue in here? Oh, I could use that one. I'll use this one. I think my mum gave me that thread. I only need a little bit. Now, what I wanted to do with that, I'll show you. I wanted to go here in the corners and just do this little stitch like this. Just two stitches in each corner.
Okay. And then do I, where's my buttons? Where did I put them? Let's see if I want any buttons. Where I've put my buttons. I'll put these buttons. Let's use these. I thought I had them up here in front of me, but I obviously don't. That's interesting. I'll have to find where they are. I've got these old buttons. Let's have a look and see if we've got them. Oh, there they are. They're hiding behind my sewing machine buttons in there you see but I might like these too small no I don't want those ones that one definitely I like that one but I'm going to put it backwards because I like them backwards sometimes reverse and maybe that that's it I'm going to put those three buttons on. One or three. Okay, now I'll start with that one. I'm going to stitch them on with the blue. Hopefully I've got enough. Can I stitch them on with the blue? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to start with this one and go back over that way just to make sure, like just say I started over there and I might leave too much space um, like between here and the edge or too little space and then have to cover over my lace and I wouldn't be happy about that. So I'm, I'm not going to end off my thread, but what I'm going to do is just I'm going to go through and, and do a knot without cutting it off. Just in case, just in case the next button came undone, uh, then that one won't fall off because I knotted it. Sorry, that it come up. Ow, stabbed myself. Just go through twice and then again, again knot it. without trimming it off and then I'm going to put this one on and I should just make it with my thread I'm just going to do a crisscross there Okay, so that is my inspired by applique little, well I'm saying it's a journal cover, but it, you could stitch down the sides and it could be a little pouch, could be many things. Isn't that cute, I really like that. So let me just double check I'm recording, yes, okay, so I'll just show you close up. So we've done the applique, that's a traditional sort of pattern for an applique. Um, normally it's needle turned and I've just done it um, with the whip stitch with a raw edge and it's not turned under. And we've added memories and buttons and lace, initials, and that's the back. I'm happy with the back. And some of it, a little bit was machine stitched. Um, in reality, I probably, with so little um, background sort of fabrics, I probably should have just done it 
by hand, but um, it's no problem doing it with machine stitch. And then this can become a journal cover. Um, you can attach it to a envelope, cardstock, manila folder, whatever you like, or it can even just be a soft cover. Put a fabric in there, bind it, um, st just stitch around it or bind it the way I did um, in the other video, like, you know, with this binding around it would be nice as well. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yep, I'm very happy with that. And um, I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.